Wow, eh? Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. That was quite the introduction. <laughs> I thought I'd just get a quick, hi, this is Jerry. Come on up. Whew. It's been a long trip here, I got to say. It feels like uh, worked hard and just the passion of this community is, is fantastic. It's great to see everyone here today, especially so many familiar faces. I've never actually had anyone pay to hear me speak, <laughs> so it's weird. I'm just thankful that, you know, it's not just my family here. <laughs> um, didn't they do a terrific job with breakfast this morning? Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Southgate Centre staff and volunteers do such a wonderful job, and I always look forward to attending events here. Thank you also for the Chamber for inviting me to speak with you today. As I was preparing for today, I was thinking a lot about my personal journey that has led me here today to share with you my very first State of the City address. I've always made the time to play an active role in our community. In high school, in addition to going to school, I also worked full time and took part in extracurricular activities, including Huron Park Huskies peer support program. I actually had the privilege of going back to my old high school, Huron Park, a few weeks ago. And it was so special to see my picture up on the wall on the catwalk, for those that are familiar with Huron Park, from uh, our 1991 uh, Huskies championship football team. It was, uh, and yes, I did have hair back then. <laughs> I knew I wanted to give my time to some of the community groups that support these less fortunate and make Woodstock a great place to live. And so I became a member of the Lions Club, as mentioned, when I was just 24, and I'm still a member to this day. Over the years, I've marshaled 35 parades, as mentioned, over my 18 years, and I had a great time doing it. These service clubs, faith groups, and community groups are so important. And looking back, I realize how much their support contributed to my childhood. Their generosity meant that I, like many other kids, had clothes to wear, backpacks to take to school, and food on the table. These wonderful volunteers have such a positive impact in so many lives, and it feels good to give back to the community and help others. My most treasured memories always involves family. As a kid, we spent Sunday afternoons after mass gathering with family, extended family, and neighbors at my grandparents. Very, very Italian upbringing, let me say that. Looking back, the imprint these experiences left was the start of my passion for community. At those gatherings, I felt a sense of belonging, of joy. And while I wouldn't have been able to describe it at the time, these gatherings offered comfort and support that would get me through some of the more difficult times of my childhood. And that's what drives me as mayor of Woodstock. I want us to feel that support, that sense of belonging, be it businesses who are supported with the resources they need to thrive and customers who choose to support and buy local, or people and their families, regardless if they've been here for generations or new to the city. I want Woodstock to feel like home. I want Woodstock to feel like belonging. I want Woodstock to be the place they choose to stay and raise their families and gather with their grandchildren and their neighbors. We have an opportunity before us to make that happen. One only has to visit the Woodstock Museum to find countless stories of the people, many of whom were Woodstock's business leaders, like many of you in this room, that helped build this community. We are so fortunate to have this cultural asset right here that captures and shares our story. How the people who made Woodstock their home have overcome challenges, envisioned a better future, and capitalized on opportunities to help create the city we know today. And just like we've done for more than 100 years, we'll continue to forge our future together. Looking back to the 1850s, our farmers recognized the need to adapt their farming practices and diversify their crops. Realizing the risks of investing in only one crop, and would you believe it, that was wheat. They started branching out into other crops as well as the commercial dairy business. This took foresight and early identification of opportunities that led to Woodstock establishing itself as the dairy capital of Canada. Because they were able to respond to the demand for milk and cheese from the boom of urbanization in southwestern Ontario. And this history of farming continues today, 
In 2022, leading into the first in-person show since the pandemic, Canada's Outdoor Farm Show announced that Woodstock will be the show's permanent home as part of the Discovery Farm Research Facility. Not only does this ensure that farming will continue to be part of our community for a long time to come, this research facility also creates opportunities for other industries to emerge and develop innovations to strengthen and support farming in southwestern Ontario. These investments in our community are just one more way we're working together to forge our futures. But just like our ancestors, we must recognize the importance of diversification to ensure the resiliency of our community and our economy. We must have a range of employment opportunities so that our kids can find st stable, well-paying work right here in Woodstock, no matter what their ambitions, passions, or their talents are. And not only do we want them to be able to work, find work they love, but they should be able to find work that affords, affords them the ability to live in a home that meets their needs. Be it safe, affordable rental properties or a range of housing options for buyers. Now in the last three months alone, we, we have draft plan approved nearly 3,000 housing units, which were made up of single detached even more importantly, semi-detached and multi-residential apartments that include apartment buildings. Again, thinking back to my childhood, what made those Sunday gatherings special was that we had multiple generations celebrating and enjoying time together. By approving the plans for this range of housing options, we ensure we not only have housing for our kids, but also our parents as they get older. By offering a range of building densities in our neighborhoods, we make it easier for aging parents to stay close to their adult children and their grandchildren. Imagine being able to walk down the street and visit your senior parents living in an apartment right in your own neighborhood. Or having your kids be able to move out, but still be close enough for Sunday dinners. And part of keeping our kids local means they need somewhere to work. Woodstock experienced a huge boom in 1853 with increased demand and opportunity for the community thanks to the arrival of the rail train, rail line. As roads took over for trains as a key transportation method, we continued to be an attractive location for businesses to set up shop with convenient access to the 401 and the 403 highways. This ideal location led us to establishing ourselves as a key player in manufacturing. Welcome, Toyota. Building on our long history of manufacturing in early 1980s, Woodstock City Council spent $1.2 million to purchase and service 129 acres of industrial land in the Petulo Ridge Business Park. Now, doesn't that sound like a bargain these days? <laughs> they made this investment with no guarantee, though, there would be businesses to buy the land but they understood the importance of forging our future. In the 30 years it took to sell the lands, that has led to 3.8 million in land sales, a million square feet of industrial construction, more than 1,200 jobs, and an estimated 60 million in payroll annually, and yes, 1.4 million in annual taxes paid to the city. Think of that, in 30 years, took us to sell all that. Since Petulo Ridge, the city has developed and sold an additional three more business parks, with a fourth one at the crossroads of 401 and the 403, which will go up for sale later this spring. This newest industrial park features 85 acres, and based on the interest we've received so far, we'll be selling it through an RFP process. We've also implemented policy and programs to support support our businesses both directly and indirectly. We've worked with private landowners to support the development and sale of privately owned industrial land. We participated in events and implemented business and talent attraction strategies locally and around the world. I mentioned earlier, I was recently at Huron Park. That event was actually a career fair hosted by Community Employment Services to introduce high school students to the available local career options options and to ensure we have the right people and skills to help drive our businesses. 
Another example of this is within the downtown. Over the last two decades, the city has undertaken a number of initiatives to encourage new investment and attract and retain businesses to the downtown. Our downtown development plan consolidates these activities and actions into a coordinated roadmap to guide our downtown revitalization efforts. In November of last year, we hired our very first downtown development officer who will lead these efforts and provide support to the downtown Woodstock BIA in an innovative partnership approach that is one of the first of its kind in all of Ontario. We have offered incentives through the Community Improvement Plan, acquired real estate, and are moving forward with a downtown streetscape master plan, which is tentatively scheduled for phase one of construction in 2024. Our city continues to grow, and we must ensure we're planning for the future. We have a responsibility to make sure we're making effective and efficient use of all of our public assets as we are maxing out our available land. I am proud of what this council has done to increase density appropriately and are looking to turn our underutilized resources into productive, valuable assets for the benefit of our community. But there's more work to be done. There are several properties that are no longer needed by the city that we're making available for sale, including the former Woodstock Hydro Building, which is a prime location right on Graham Street and will soon be available for redevelopment in a high density. Not only will this increase the housing stock, it will generate additional tax um, revenue, and arguably even more important, will bring people living in the core to help create a more vibrant downtown and support our downtown restaurants and shops. We're also getting things in order to add, or add to our housing stock. With the rezoning of the former Cedar Creek Golf Course for high density residential development and mixed commercial space, which will be available for sale through a public RFP process once completed. And all this housekeeping is being done so that we can be sure we've maximized the use of our available lands. We must explore a variety of solutions to ensure we have an available supply of land to support our growing community, both for residential and commercial uses. While our focus is supporting the success of Woodstock, we must also be mindful that we are part of a larger community within the county. Building a thriving city at the heart of the county offers benefits beyond our borders. We've had the foresight to acquire land for the benefit of the community since our early days. Going back to the early 1900s, residents petitioned for the city to acquire land at the south side of the city to form Southside Park. This quickly became an important gathering space for the community. For more than 100 years, Southside Park has been a place for people to celebrate, connect with friends and family, and enjoy leisure activities. From early days when it, was, when it attracted people to Woodstock to enjoy the beach and the dances, boating and now home to award-winning baseball diamonds, playground, a skate and bike park, as well as home to the many free community events put on by the city. And last year was a great year for our events. After a long two-year hiatus due to COVID, it was so wonderful to be able to connect with our neighbors again and enjoy free entertainment, including some really high caliber acts like the Trues, who was, of course, the Cowapalooza headliner. This year is shaping up to be another great year. We're excited to introduce Cultural Canvas which is replacing Art in the Park as a community art gallery that embraces a broader range of arts and culture experiences that are more reflective of our community. And I can't wait to share a headliner for Cowapalooza, but unfortunately, I'm told I'm not allowed to say anything yet. Sorry. <laughs> but in case you're wondering, I will be wearing my almost famous cow pants. My wife lets me wear them one time a year. Thank you, Sarah. And speaking of Southside Park, it's important to talk about the Southgate Centre expansion. Southgate Centre is another example of a beloved community amenity that was put forward by community members. For more than 60 years, 
It's been serving Woodstock seniors and demand for its services continues to grow. And as the number of seniors in our community increases, they continue to live a healthy and active lifestyle for longer. Southgate Centre once again needs to expand. We have been fortunate to continue the tradition of local businesses and business leaders like yourselves, helping to ensure those living in our communi community have access to important services and amenities that contribute to their health and well-being. You can visit the website to find a list of community donors who stepped up to the plate to help make this expansion a reality. I can't wait to see how the Centre helps to forge our future by offering more people a place to connect, a place to find support, a place to belong. We just held our strategic reprioritization workshop, there's a mouthful, last week where we re-examined our strategic plan and discussed as a council what we wanted to focus on over the next four years. While no decisions were made and there are still a few more steps in the process, much of our discussion centered around what remains one of the top objectives in our plan, providing a safe community for all. In our 2023 Revenue Budget Council approved four new fire suppression officers and 10, yes, 10 new police officers that will help us achieve that objective. Now, one of the most significant events last year was the 2022 Municipal and School Board election. Obviously, this was particularly a highlight for me. <laughs> a little stressful. If anybody watched that video, they'll know it. We also saw a pretty significant turnover on council, with three new members joining four returning members. Please take a moment to welcome those members of council who are here with us this morning, and I'd ask them to please stand. Councillor Lauder. Count yeah, thank you. Councillor Schattenberg, who's also a Lions Club member with me. Councillor Wismer Van Meer. And City County Councillor Wheaton. <laughs> Councillor Leatherborough and Councillor Tate were unfortunately not able to join us today. I do want to say thank you to Ben Adley, our new CAO of the County of Oxford, being here as well. So I appreciate that very much. As a council, we're committed to creating stronger connections with our community. This is one of those areas that really suffered over the last few years as a result of the pandemic. Connections of all kinds were impacted as we isolated ourselves to prevent the spread of COVID. Celebrating the return of our special events for the first time since the pandemic and seeing people in our community getting back out to connect with each other was one of the greatest joys of 2022. As a member of council, we are here to serve the public. And that means more proactive and transparent communications about the initiatives and decisions that impact you. We have added dedicated resources to help get that information out through tools like our website, social media channels, and of course our What's On Woodstock magazine, just to name a few. And thanks to our media partners like Heart FM and Hope FM for having me on to chat on a regular basis virtually every other week, talking about council meetings. We want you to have the information you need to take part in our service offerings or speak up to have your say as we adapt current or create new programs. Like with the benches in Museum Square, we're listening. I encourage you to watch for opportunities to provide input through formal initiatives. Like one upcoming on our strategic plan realignment or by contacting any members of the council directly. Each of us has contact information on the website and many members of council are on social media and available that way. All of our council meetings are open to the public and stream live on our YouTube channel. You can also find them on Rogers TV. Members of the public also have the option to register as a delegation if they'd like to bring something to council's direction as a formal channel directly at a council meeting. I had the privi privilege earlier this month to take part in Woodstock's very first Holy Mela. It was such an incredible experience. There was so much joy and celebration, and it really highlighted the values actually shared across many cultural communities, even when on the surface, 
we may, may seem different. In Woodstock, we have always believed in the importance of family, of volunteerism, or service to the community, of honesty. Now, unfortunately, that jacket didn't make it. <laughs> in speaking with some of our newer community members, they often share with me that part of what drew to them to Woodstock was our reputation as the friendly city. I'm so proud to hear how that reputation extends beyond our borders. As I mentioned before, it is so important that Woodstock is a place where everyone feels welcome and like they belong, where they feel supported and connected and want to play an active role in forging our future together. As a city, we need to ensure there are adequate supports and resources for all residences. This is why we're advancing initiatives like our new diversity, equity, and inclusion policy that is coming to council this Thursday. Outlining our commitment to cultivating and preserving dignity, equity, and inclusion. It also means investing in things like the new cricket pitch that will soon be going in at Cowan Fields so that people, no matter what their interests, can live a healthy and active lifestyle. I'm thrilled to see this Breakfast with America come back and so grateful for the opportunity to be here with you this morning. I look forward to continuing this tradition in years to come. But before I go, I also challenge you to think about what being the friendly city means to you. What behaviors can you adopt that will help us live up to our reputation? What role will you play as we forge our future together? Thank you to the Chamber for organizing this event, Southgate Centre for hosting, and Ifan Huda, of course, for moderating the session. John from Rogers, Matt from Power Web Media for being here and recording this event. I ask everyone that you continue to give back to our community, either financially or by volunteering and supporting local every opportunity you can. Thank you. Have a great day.